Hello everybody, um, in this video we're going to talk about the liquid liquid extraction in Aspen Plus um, using multi-stage um, contact. So in the previous video we saw that we can do the liquid liquid extraction in a single stage which was just a decanter and we were able to find out the um, the degree of separation and the uh, efficiency of the process from uh, like the outputs of the uh, decanter. In this video, we will see the uh, first. We will uh, try to find out what uh, block that we have here in Aspen Plus that can do the liquid liquid extraction, and we will talk in uh, more details about the uh, definition of this block and some important points that you have to keep in mind while working with the multi stage um, liquid liquid extraction Aspen Plus. So, the block that is uh, kind of responsible for the liquid liquid extraction Aspen Plus which is going to be the extract column which says it's a rigorous counter current extraction for a liquid with a solvent and it models liquid liquid extractor so this is exactly what we're looking for um, and um, um, I'm just going to call it the uh, multi-stage extractor um, and we have to uh, like keep in mind one important information or piece of information that we mentioned in the previous video which is the routing of the fluids which fluid is gonna go from the top of the column and which is gonna go from the bottom and we mentioned that this is um, totally dependent on the densities of the two fluids the more dense fluid is gonna fl flow from the top to the bottom and the less dense is gonna flow from the bottom to the top so um, we, we saw that the feed which is water and acetic acid has a density of around uh, one gram per cubic centimeters while the solvent is 0.72 so the solvent is going to be the lighter fluid which is going to flow from the bottom to the top and the feed is going to be the um, more dense fluid which is going to flow from the top to the bottom and um, we know from from our information or knowledge about the um, uh, the extractors that the bottom product which is going to be the feed after uh, removing the acetic acid from it is going to be called the extract uh, i mean the raffinate and the top product which is the solvent after extracting the solute from the feed is going to be called the extract um, and and here um, we're done uh, until this point we're done with the connections of the streams to and out of the extractor now let's go to the definition of the extractor itself uh, we will find that we have four tabs here that need to be defined the first is the specs then the key components the streams and the pressure uh, the, the the streams is going to be straightforward you just need to tell the software which stream that the feed and the products are going to be uh, going in and uh, out from. Um, we, we will notice that we have the option to add side feeds and to add uh, side products if, if we want. So uh, in case of having no side feeds or no side products, then this specs, I mean the, the streams is going to be uh, automatically filled uh, or, or defined once we define the number of the stages. So let's say i'm gonna go first for five stages then the streams is gonna be defined automatically it tells you that this is the solvent is gonna go from stream number five uh, because it's the less dense flow is going going from the bottom of the column and the feed is going from stream one and the raffinate is going uh, out of stream five uh, or, or stage five and the extract coming out of stage number one so this this is um, kind of very simple and straightforward thing. So this is regarding the specs um, or the number of the stages. Then we go to the second part here, which is the thermal options. And it, it in this part we can uh, we can tell if or or specify if the uh, extractor is going to work under adiabatic con uh, conditions, which means that there is no heat added or lost from the column. So in case of having a, a process which is endothermic, then the temperature of the streams is going to decrease, um, and vice versa. Um, so uh, if, if we mention that this or choose the adiabatic option, then we don't have to do anything else. If we we can we can specify a temperature a temperature profile. Let's say I'm gonna go from stage one that it is at 20 Celsius and say that stage number two is gonna be whatever temperature that I want. So we can define it if we have we have the the temperature profile. This is something that we can specify, or we can specify the duty in case we have um, like. A, 
cooling jacket or heating jacket or cooling or heating coils in, inside the, the column, then we can uh, specify how much heat we are giving to each stage um, if, if we want. I will go first for, uh, for now for adiabatic conditions um, for, for some reason that I'm going to mention in, in like in a few minutes later. <clears throat> so this is um, all about the uh, the first tab, which is the specs. Now let's go to the key components because this this is one of the most important uh, parts of the uh, um, liquid liquid extractor, and this is something that may can mess up everything. So we have to make sure that we define it well and we understand uh, what we need to do in uh, in this tab. So um, we have here a part which says that a first liquid. And this is what says a second liquid. Um, I, I would like to open the help here. You can just click on uh, or press on F1 button and it's going to open the help that relates to the open tab that we have here. So here it, can tell, it tells us what it means by the key components. And it tells us how to choose the key components for the first liquid and the second liquid. So we have two liquid phases. One of them is called the first liquid and the second is called the second liquid. Um, the, the, the software here tells us some information. So it first says that the key components identify the first and second liquid phases. You must identify the key components in each phase to help the phase splitting algorithm deal with the uh, wide range of compositions in the extractor, which may uh, include only first liquid in the top feed and only second liquid in the bottom feed. So there, there are two feeds. The, the, what it says here that the top feed is the first liquid. This, this is what it says here. And the second liquid is the bottom feed. So in our case, the first liquid is gonna be the, the, the fresh feed, which is water and acetic acid. The second liquid is the solvent. Um, the, the, there is so, so, some sort of kind of miscommunication here. I think this is some something uh, th that, uh, that can, can be better in the software, but this is how it works. That it, it's the, um, we route the fluids based on their densities. But the software here says that the concentrations of the key components, not the density that identifies the phases. So um, if, if I identify the first phase uh, as, as like the solvent, for instance, then it's not the density. I can, I can use it as uh, like a first liquid while its density is lower. Um, by just identifying the key component. So th this is how it defines the, fir the first and second liquids. So, and th this is the, the, the point where the, the issue could happen or the, 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 uh, the misdefinition uh, of the components or the streams may happen. The, we know that the density of the fluid identifies its, its flow. Uh, or where it goes, but the the software does not deal with it like this. Uh, it deals with the with it in the way that the key component is defined. Uh, the software understands the first liquid phase or the first liquid as the 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 flow or the liquid flowing from the first stage to the last stage, and the second. Uh, or the second liquid phase um, is the one that flows from uh, the other direction, in the opposite direction, from the bottom to the top. Uh, so I understand from from my, my 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 understanding of my problem and the the nature of the two fluids that uh, the first fluid in my case is gonna be the the feed and the second fluid is the solvent. But the software tells me that the extract can treat the first liquid phase as either the solvent or the feed it, it, it has no issues or no problem with flipping them so i as a user must be aware of that and i have to tell the software which one of them will you consider at the first liquid and which one uh, liquid phase and which one you are going to consider at the second liquid phase by defining which component is the key component which is uh, the available in high concentration in uh, in the two streams so I know the first liquid is the solvent, the, the, the feed, which is rich in water. And the second one is the uh, solvent, which is rich in isopropyl ether. It's, it's, it's kind of tricky, but if you understand how it works, it's going to be easy. But you have, you have to make sure that you define them well. Um, so it, it was uh, optional in the previous case when we worked with a single stage, but here it's, it's a must that you have to do this. If, if you uh, flip them, then you get like very very weird and 
and bad results. Uh, for the pressure profile, I can define only one pressure or pressure of one stage uh, for stage one to be one atmosphere, and I, I can make a, a temperature or pressure profile like for for the stage number five. I have five stages. It's gonna be 1.25 atmospheres. Then it's it's gonna be fine. Um, we still have the extractor uh, not fully defined because the this part, which is the estimates, is not uh, is not filled. For for this part, there should be some initial values of temperature uh, that the software will start with or the start iterations with, uh, which is is not available. Um, and and you see that there is nothing here. But if I choose, for instance, to define the temperature. For instance, I'd say that this is 20 Celsius for the first stage, then there's no need to estimate the temperature. So it, it's going to go for what whatever temperature I define here. But in case of, of going for adiabatic or specifying the heat duty, then there should be a temperature that it, it should start with. Um, and I go for 20 Celsius. In this case, the software must not abide with this temperature. It's going to be like a first guess, and it's, it, it's going to go for whatever temperature that uh, the solution gives at the end. Um, there, there, there could be a, a way to give or generate estimates in case you have uh, a previous run. You have already run the, the simulation, and you got results for this block, um, and you changed something of the inputs, for instance, the number of stages, the feed composition, whatever then you can get the outputs of the first stage as an estimate for the uh, or the first run as an estimate for the second run which is uh, what you can do from here but in, in my case I, I cannot get anything from here um, so by doing this I'm, I'm done with everything so I can now run the simulation and take a look at what I can I have um, here so for the results we'd see that this is uh, giving us the top state tem temperature, which is 19.28, which is very close to 20, not exactly, but it's very close. Um, the liquid flow rates um, in, in kilomol per hour, the bottom stage temperature and the liquid flows. So it's it's kind of nice, but it, 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 it doesn't give a lot, of, a lot of information. The This part might be the nicest part of it, which tells me how much of the acetic acid is going to the extract and how much is going to the raffinate. In the single stage, we were able to get um, uh, I think 50-50, so it was 50% going to extract and 50 going to raffinate. Um, and and I, I think I forgot to mention this, that I got the feed and the solvent to be duplicated. So the same flow rates that uh, are going to the single stage are going to the multi-stage. And, and this is one, one of the very, very nice things that I want to highlight, which is uh, using the same streams, the same flow rates, the same compositions, the same temperatures and pressures, you can get different results by changing the way you contact the two streams together. And this is the beauty of the uh, counter-current extraction, which is, or, or contact in general, because you, you have uh, like a, a big driving force along the whole process. So it's not just one stage, you have many stages. Uh, with continuous uh, mass transfer due to the difference in the concentrations in both cases uh, and, and the presence of the driving force. So you're able to uh, boost up the the, uh, uh, the separation from 50-50 to 84.3%, which is uh, like much more than what we got before by just changing the way you contact the two streams. Um, you can take a look at the profiles and see how the compositions, for instance, change with the, um, um, let's see, the summary, the, uh, yeah, the liquid flow, I would just like, uh, yeah, I, I want to see the composition. You, you can see the key values, which is like a very nice thing, uh, but the compositions is the one that I feel is the uh, like nice part of it. So you can make it for the three components. Uh, for the first liquid, which is the uh, fresh feed, I would like to first make a single Y stage, a uh, Y axis. Um, so it's easier for us to see. Uh, the, the, this uh, stream is fed from the first, uh, uh, this is the extract, um, let me check. Um, uh, so this is the first liquid, 
um, and the the first liquid is uh, is the the feed which is rich in uh, uh, acetic acid. So this is the water uh, starts as eighty something percent because it was thirty percent uh, acetic acid and seventy percent percent water. So water is low, and as you go down the column, it loses acetic acid and the water composition increases, and the acetic acid decreases. So it's it's kind of um, like intuitive and and uh, simple. Uh, you, you can you can easily understand it for the second liquid it might be kind of tricky but it's it's the same thing but you have just to keep in mind that the second liquid is flowing the other way um, oops I think it is something wrong here um, I want to do the, the custom select all um, so what we see here the again the single y-axis Um, you'll see that it is going the other way, so the idopropyl ether composition is, is starting from here and it's decreasing because it's gaining more acetic acid, so it's getting diluted with the acetic acid and the acetic acid concentration is is, is low and increases to reach the maximum point here. So it's, it's kind of a nice thing here. You can, um, uh, you can change the number of stages, make it like, for instance, 10 and see how much this will change uh, the... Uh, the, the separation and the streams here you'd see that it's already automatically uh, changing by the way I, this is telling you something here about the first and second liquid um, here it says a stream reach in first liquid key component must enter top stage it, it, it's, it's saying must here and I think they're giving a lot of hints about the the routing of the fluids and definition of the first and second liquid because it's it's a very confusing thing uh, and the stream reach in the second key component must enter from the bottom stage so so it's it's important to keep this in mind um, and we will run the simulation and take a look at the results um, and uh, see about the split fraction. You see it's now 92%. So instead of having 83%, it's 92%. Now we can look at the profiles for the first liquid and the second liquid. This is, um, I think it needs to be redrawn for some reason. It doesn't update the plots automatically. So I have to go to the profiles again and do the custom and um, think something is not right here um, and select all um, and in this case you can again single y-axis now you see it's getting lower and this is getting higher so it's 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 expected so the this this tells that um, we can improve the uh, the separation by just uh, increasing the number of stages. There are other parameters that you can test, for instance, the effect of pressure, the effect of temperature. I do not believe the pressure will, will do a lot of uh, difference because it's liquid phase, so it's not like affected by the temperature that much. But I, I believe the, liquid, the, the temperature will make a lot of difference. Uh, you should expect that higher temperature will reduce the efficiency of the column. So this is something that you will, you can try. I don't want to like uh, spend more time on this so this is going to be something that you can simply change and uh, test by yourself so i hope it helps and i'll see you in the next video inshallah goodbye